Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Fun with Economics. And what I'm gonna do is a real short little video, first of all, and it's gonna be kind of a review. We're gonna review change in quantity supply, change in quantity demanded, a change in demand, change in supply, and then maybe the price ceilings and floors real quick. So if you have a blank piece of paper, which you'll need, or if you happen to have graph paper, it doesn't really matter. All you need is just the ideas, the concepts. So we'll start first of all with this thing called change in quantity demanded. Change in quantity supplied. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> We contrasted these two ideas. Change in quantity demanded. What was the big deal about that? <clears throat> these two, actually, these two. There's a price change. Okay? There's a price change. That affects the curve. This one, for both of these, the curve shifts. Left or right to show an increase or decrease even though the price hasn't changed. Remember the difference with the word quantity in here, there's a price change. If the word quantity isn't in there, you're talking about the curve shifting. The price stays the same, but the curve's going to shift for some reason. Now I also want to kind of reiterate, because I didn't do a great job, curves shift left and right. So when I ask you questions about what's the curve doing, you say it shifts left or right to show an increase or a decrease. Prices, which are over here, and quantity, which is down here, prices increase or decrease. Quantities increase or decrease. Please try not to use the words up and down. Up and down doesn't quite mean the same thing. So when you talk about price, I want you to use the word increase or decrease. When you talk about quantity, use the words increase or decrease but when you talk about curves they're going to shift left or right so very quickly let's just talk about change in quantity demanded so if we just drew once again a demand curve and then pick some price we would see that at that particular price, this is the quantity being demanded. Now what we said is there's going to be a change in the price. So we let's just say in this instance we're going to decrease the price and just pick a spot, let's say here. Well, when you now at that price draw the dotted line out and then go down to the x-axis, you will see at that price this is the quantity being demanded. So, you're changing the quantity demanded because of the change in the price. And if you remember, what we said is, it's shown by movement along the demand curve. We move from that point to that point on the demand curve in response to a change in the price. Now, if I was just to draw a generic supply curve, we could see the same thing. And I'll just you know pick a price here and you go out to the supply curve and you go down to the quantity the x-axis you would see at that price that's how many are being supplied well let's show an increase in the price this time okay let's say the price increased to here and you draw the dotted line out and then you draw the dotted line down you would see that as the price increased, the quantity supplied increased. Once again, we move from that point on the curve to this point on the curve. And what else does this illustrate? Well, it's the inverse relationship of demand as price decreased, quantity demanded increased, they're inverse. But with supply, as the price increased, the quantity being supplied increased. They have a direct relationship. They go in the same direction. Okay? So that's change in quantity demanded or supplied because there's a price change. Now when we talk about change in demand, once again we'll just do what we did before. 
there's a generic demand curve. And we'll just pick a price right there. And at that price, that is how many is being demanded. Now we said there isn't going to be a price change, but for some reason, let's say, people demand more, even though the price doesn't change. So if I drew a new demand curve, D1, and you see the price is still the same, but for some reason now, people are demanding more. And we said there was five different reasons. What if you get a raise? The price of the product stay the same, but you can demand more. What if it becomes a fad or a trend or advertising? That affects demand also. So that could, even though the price doesn't change, all of a sudden they're advertising it or it becomes trendy and people run out and buy it. Uh, your expectations of the future can affect what you're going to do now. There were five things and you can look that back on the chapter four notes. Now, if we did supply and picked a particular price, I'm doing both of them on the same graph, but just showing you the difference. So at that price, this is how many is being supplied. Well, let's draw a new supply curve, S1, and you'll now see at that same price, for some reason, suppliers are willing to supply less. And we said there was all kinds of things, you know, government taxes or subsidies, uh, the cost of inputs. If you're doing, you know, producing this pen, if the plastic costs more, they're going to supply less because they're not going to make as much profit. In chapter five, it lists all those things, why curves shift. So with this one, that's a shift to the left. Supply curves can also shift to the right if there's an increase in supply. Demand, we showed that that was a shift of the curve to the right to show an increase, but you could also shift the curve to the left to show at that price people are demanding less. Even though the price doesn't change, they're shifting their demand or the supply based on some other factors. So hopefully that helps you. Remember this one? curve shifts in the other one it was a change in the price okay real quickly price ceilings I I pre-drew this one so it wouldn't take as much time so at this if you look at it if this is just some product we don't know what it is but equilibrium would be the price would be ten and a half ten dollars fifty cents and the quantity would be 105. Now, what if the government, once again, steps in and says, that's not fair, we want, it's too expensive, this is a product we want people to have, and they come in and they set a price, let's say, of $5. We want to help people out. So, at $5, you would draw, once again, the dotted line from five till it crosses the supply and the demand curve, then you would draw it down to the x-axis and you would see the consequence of the government setting a price ceiling. Remember, it's kind of opposite what you would think. You can't go above the ceiling, even though most people think the ceiling is up here. In economics, the ceiling, you can't go above that. You can't charge more. So what happens? Well, you can see when the price decreases, According to demand, oh, people want to demand more. They want 160. But suppliers, when the, when the price decreases, they want to supply less. So you see that supply, they only want to supply 50. So if you do the subtraction, there is going to be a shortage of 110. And how do you illustrate that? We said you would color in this triangle that illustrates the shortage. And then we, once again, the $5 is the price ceiling. 
And once again, if the government had stayed out, 105 people, I mean, would, be, would have been demanded and supplied. But because the government's helping, people will demand 160, but they're only going to provide 50. If the government had stayed out, 105 would have been demanded and supplied, people would have received it, but now there's only gonna be 50 because suppliers aren't gonna supply more at that decreased price. So that's, once again, the price ceiling. And the last one for this short little video is the opposite is price floor. And before we talked about this, how this illustrates why minimum wage actually does the opposite it actually hurts and there's a few people it might help because they get uh, higher wages but usually it's offset by they cut their benefits plus lots and lots of people don't get a job so here at ten dollars and fifty cents let's say an hour a hundred and let's say it's 105 million people would be willing to supply their labor and 105 million employees would be demanded by employers okay equilibrium well the government says once again you can't pay that that's not fair you got to pay higher so you got to pay 15 dollars. so here we go draw the dotted line so it intersects both the demand and the supply curve where it crosses those go down to the x-axis with both and you will see that at the higher wage, remember supply, you know, if we're just talking about supply, yeah, if the price increases, they want to supply more. So 150, let's say million people want to supply their labor, but employers are only demanding 60 million. So you do the math there is going to be a surplus of people who cannot find a job okay because the supply is greater than the demand the supply of workers is greater than the demand for workers and you color in this triangle up here and once again we said they're both triangles because the further you get away from the equilibrium the further away you get, the greater, in this instance, the surplus will be. So we draw this. Surplus is illustrated by that triangle. And this is the price floor. Remember, it's opposite what you would think. Remember, you can't pay below or charge below the floor, right? You can't go below the floor in the room. So that's just a quick overview of those topics, which are the ones that a lot of students get uh, confused by. Once again, if you have any questions, the test will be coming up next week on all of this. And please email me questions if you have them about uh, what's going on. And I am more than willing to help you and answer all your questions. So thanks and have a great day.